What do you know? After it looked like the days of Chris Jericho dishing out code breakers for a stunning victory were well and truly behind him, Le Champion only went and rolled back the clock with a double knee face buster for the win against Colt Cabana on Dynamite recently. But that got me thinking. What other finishers have seemingly been useless for an age in this balmy business? Well, from bone breaking submissions not producing a tap in some time, to the birth of a far superior signature acting as the final nail in a finisher's coffin. These are those once prolific moves that no longer get the job done. Gareth here from What Culture Wrestling, and here are nine wrestling finishes that haven't worked in years. Number nine, Sami Zayn, Brainbuster. In the time before El Generico mysteriously disappeared, and right before the ultimate underdog known as Sami Zayn rocked up in NXT, that mass sensation could regularly be found dropping folks on their brains in order to come away with that all-important W. But it was Zayn's arrival on the Black and Gold show that seemed to all but end his usage of the terrifically executed modified suplex. With the one-time independent darling instead reverting to his equally effective halluva kick in the years that would follow his 2013 NXT debut. Now sure, Zayn has still been known to pull out the odd brain buster on occasion, most notably pulverizing Kevin Owens and Daniel Bryan on the apron with variations at Battleground 2016 and on a 2020 edition of SmackDown respectively, however the move hasn't earned him a victory in nearly a decade. In fact, Generico's last recorded use of the top rope variation of the iconic move came in a match teaming alongside pal Kevin Steen against the Young Bucks in early 2013, but it still couldn't get the job done then as the pair fell to the now all elite duo at PWG DDT 4. Number 8. Brock Lesnar Kaimura Lock It turns out that Brock Lesnar's quick conquering of Cain Velasquez at Crown Jewel 2019 is actually memorable for more than the obvious. Away from being one of the most underwhelming and pointless developments in modern WWE history, the sight of the then WWE champion tapping out a fellow former UFC heavyweight champion in rapid fashion was actually the last time Lesnar earned himself a victory with his Kaimura Lock. Now the Beast Incarnate has most definitely cinched the move in on a number of foes since toppling Kane in two minutes flat, with Brock most recently locking in his sickening arm submission on Bobby Lashley during a Monday Night Raw attack. But the days of Lesnar using his finishing submission as his go-to means of coming away with another win on his record appear to be all but over. When you possess a signature move as dominant and explosive as the F5 though, it's doubtfully misses snapping arms en route to victory. Number 7. Braun Strowman Chokeslam Showcasing how to effectively use the squash match concept to fully reinvent a flailing character, Braun Strowman's reintroduction as a jobber-murdering monster on Raw back in 2016 saw the monster among men utilize a brilliant reverse chokeslam to smash through his victims. And while the monster of all monsters will continue to boast a more traditional chokeslam throughout the rest of his time under the WWE banner, the former Universal Champion's days of concluding his matches by gripping the throat of a poor soul appear to be well and truly over. By September 19th of 2016, Strowman had all but kissed goodbye to his innovative chokeslam, catching Sin Cara in midair with one of his soon-to-be trademark running power slams for the impactful win on Raw. In more recent times, that fairly basic match ender has also been somewhat shelved too, with a recently returning Strowman instead choosing to let loose a vicious powerbomb on his foes on the likes of Raw and SmackDown. Nothing quite hits like the sight of James Ellsworth getting dropped face first from up high though. Number 6. Apollo Crews, the gorilla press into a standing moonsault. Back during his first stint in developmental, former Intercom Continental champion Apollo Crews began to pick up steam in the wake of knocking off countless foes with his highly impressive Gorilla Press moonsault combination. Yet this sort of intricate and complicated though still rather epic way of sealing the deal was something that head of NXT Triple H felt would only take the talented performer so far. Sure enough, in the lead up to his takeover respect showdown with Tyler Breeze, the game took Crews to one side during the breaking ground series that followed NXT's rising stars and advised him that I think with your physique and everything, some kind of power move would be good. You know, that has some stamp to it because you're quick and sudden. Fast forward to the closing stages of said bout, and the days of Gorilla Press moonsaulting his way to victory appeared to be over, with the powerful performer nailing Breeze with a spinning powerbomb for the first time, and no doubt making Papa H proud in the process. Cruz still whacks out the odd Gorilla Press and standing moonsault from time to time, but has since relied more on everything from said spin out powerbomb to a chokeslam variant to come away with a W. Number 5. Dolph Ziggler, Zigzag. 
tag. Since stepping in between the WWE ropes for the first time all the way back in 2005, Dolph Ziggler has found himself cycling through his fair share of finishes, it must be said. There was that period when old Ziggles decided that choking the life out of his enemies via sleeper hold was the match-winning move for him, of course. And there was also actually a time when the former World Heavyweight Champion Zig Zag was far more than a hollow near-fall creator. From the time of his debut as Dolph Ziggler in 2008, up to the point he battled it out with Zack Ryder at Vengeance 2011, zigzagging was often all that was needed to come away victorious. But it was during that latter event that the show-off showcased his new fondness of a superkick match ender. It'll be a few more years until Ziggler decided to fully rely on his version of Sweet Chin Music as his most effective finisher of choice, with Dolph scoring the biggest win of his career with said zigzag-assisted world title cash-in back in 2013. But from around 2015 onwards, zigzagging became little more than a flashy transitional move. Number 4. Bailey, Bailey to Belly As seen as recently as during one of the more recent editions of Monday Night Raw, Bailey's once decisive Belly to Belly conclusion has long since lost its effectiveness in between the ropes. And that was never really in any doubt given how the move has been treated in recent years. Ever since the former SmackDown Raw and NXT Women's and Tag Team Champion let loose her rose plant finisher for the very first time on Nikki Cross back on a November 2019 edition of SmackDown, the former underdog's ability to come out on top with her Bailey to Belly appears to have dwindled. In truth, the star likely realized that her tried and tested Bailey to Belly was forever going to be connected to her babyface rise and heartwarming victories over the likes of Sasha Banks in NXT. So, violently drilling her enemies' heads into the canvas instead was probably the right call for the heelish former hugger going forward. Number 3. Drew McIntyre Future Shock DDT Picking up his first piece of WWE gold in the form of the Intercontinental Championship and a great many more wins via his so-so double underhook DDT during his first WWE spell, a change of attire was actually the catalyst behind Drew McIntyre's decision to relegate his Future Shock DDT to transitional signature from around 2013 onwards. As the former WWE Champion would reveal during his appearance on Broken Skull Sessions in 2020, accidentally nailing Ryback with a bizarre-looking big boot due to his newly presented 3MB leather pants unexpectedly restricting him mid-move, paved the way for the Claymore to be suddenly born and the Future Shock finisher to ultimately lose its efficacy, all while knocking himself out in the process, mind. And though it would be a few more years before McIntyre would fully set WWE on fire with a string of monumental victories via flying boot from hell, the resilient Scott quickly set about Claymoring his way back to the big time on the independent scene in the wake of his disappointing release in 2014, with the Future Shock DDT rarely convincing anyone a three count is on the horizon ever since. Number 2. Seth Rollins Pedigree Throughout his often chaotic time sat in the gorilla position, you never quite knew what odd decree or development would tumble out of former WWE chairman Vince McMahon's mouth next, and that's something Seth Rollins discovered the hard way on a number of occasions over the years. Along with being told by his one-time boss to cease wearing white attire for a spell, the visionary was infamously banned from stomping his rivals into next week due to Vinnie Mac not being keen on his top guy boasting such a violent move that children could easily replicate. Just think of the children. So from around 2015 to mid-2017, Rollins could regularly be spotted nailing his adversaries with old mentor Triple H's pedigree, only to then drop this particular game changer in April 2017, as he shifted towards a ripcord knee finisher. Soon realizing that this wasn't doing the trick either, January 2018 saw the return of Rollins' trusty stomp, and the King of Kings pedigree quickly became a signature crowd popper for the former Universal Champion instead, and rather Star's ability to catch a spear in midair with the passed down weapon still drops jaws on the reg, you'd be hard pressed to find a recent moment when Rollins has kept his rival down for the count with the legendary move. Number 1. John Cena Proto Bomb There's no denying the fact that one of John Cena's five moves of doom is pretty much a carbon copy of his one-time match ender. During his early run within the company, in all his vibrant trunked glory, Cena would win the day in between the ropes with his Proto Bomb finisher, a modified spin-out powerbomb of sorts if you will. And it was only when coming face to face with fellow next big thing Brock Lesnar that the future multiple time WWE champion decided it was time for a change. April 2003 saw the birth of Cena's pointed dig at the Beast F5 by the name of the FU, a Death Valley driver he's still putting down the odd foe with today whenever he decides to head back to WWE for a spell. Clearly feeling the Proto Bomb still had something to offer in terms of being a pretty cool way of inflicting damage though, Cena would adjust the move a touch before using it as a setup for his five knuckles. Shuffle. Yet neither of said moves have ever really immediately led to a victory for Super Cena in the wake of the Attitude Adjustments arrival, acting as little more than signature steps on the road to 
an emphatic AA or SDF finale. And that's our list. Know of any other wrestling finishers that haven't worked in years? Let us know all about them in the comment section right down below. And do not forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're at it. Also, if this kind of thing is your bag, then head on over to whatculture.com and find some more incredible articles just like the one this video you're watching right this second is based on. I've been Gareth from What Culture Wrestling. Thank you as always for clicking on this lovely video today. Hopefully I'll see your faces very, very soon. But in the meantime, just be good to yourself. Bye-bye.